shoulder of time upon him, Mr. Danny Tantina, Excellencies, dear friends, ladies and gentlemen. On this happy day, I extend my warmest congratulations to Jan Apollin on the official opening of the Singapore branch. It is the first Israeli time to set up a presence in Singapore, and it will certainly add diversity and vibrancy to Singapore's banking and financial landscape. And by using Singapore as a launch pad to the region, Bank Apollin will be able to expand its business. Today, the financial services sector contributes 11% of Singapore's gross domestic product. There are more than 600 local and foreign financial institutions who are present in Singapore. Steady growth has been posted in all areas, including banking, insurance, asset management, and capital markets. In the last few years, new areas emerged, including commodities trading, structured finance, and alternative asset classes like private equity and Islamic finance. With Asia growing dramatically, it is natural that the Israeli private sector should pay increasing attention to the abundant opportunities in the region. The strong economic growth in China and India is lifting most of Southeast Asia, which itself is a market of over 500 million people. Just last week, ASEAN leaders met in Singapore to sign a number of landmark agreements, including the ASEAN Charter and the ASEAN Economic Community Blueprints. The ASEAN Economic Community envisages the establishment of a single market and a single production base, integrated into the global economy, allowing free flow of goods, services, investments, and talent. Singapore is an international financial, business, and logistics hub in the heart of Southeast Asia. It's well positioned to benefit from the growth of China, ASEAN, India, and the Middle East. It is a new age of globalization. And I think it is particularly fitting that this evening's event should be held here at the Asian Civilizations Museum, where we are having an exhibition on the island which he speaks of another era, long in the past, when globalization set through Asia, where East and South Asia were connected, where a university in Bihar once had 10,000 students, with dormitory, is a building soaring to the clouds. That age is now reincarnated in the 21st century. And Singapore, in the middle of it, is becoming the London of a new re-emerging nation. I hope that Bank of Wallace is present in Singapore to encourage more Israeli companies to use Singapore as a gateway into a region which is transforming the world. The Bank of Wallace's presence in Singapore also reflects the warm relationship between Israel and Singapore. It is a mutually beneficial relationship that is built on deep bonds of friendship. By helping to establish our armed forces in the early days, Israel played a major role in securing Singapore's independence and sovereignty. My wife and I visited Israel in May this year. It was not our first visit to Israel, but it was the first by Singapore foreign minister. When I was in armed forces, I must have visited Israel more than 10 times and made many friends. Our bilateral cooperation in defense and other areas has expanded in breadth and depth over the years. One good example is the establishment of the Singapore Israel Industrial Research and Development Foundation, formed in 1997 to spur commercial R&D. Today, the foundation has approved 70 communication, software, security, and media projects worth a total of $74 million in research spending and employing some 1,100 research scientists and engineers. There is scope to do much more between us in the high tech sector. We are also embarking on new areas of cooperation. 
during my last visit to Israel. I had the pleasure of signing an agreement on cooperation in science, culture, and education with Vice Prime Minister and Foreign Minister Tzipi Dijini. A nice outcome of that agreement was the recent participation of the Bathsheba Dance Company in the Singapore Dance Festival. Our universities have also established good linkages. Israel's Education Minister, Yuli Tamir, visited Singapore in July this year. People-to-people -people interactions have increased significantly in recent years. And there's, group, and there's a growing Israeli community in Singapore. Ben Hapawari's decision to establish a branch here is therefore not an isolated event, but a further expression of a growing relationship between Israel and Singapore. And this relationship has its roots in colonial times when Sephardic Jews from Iraq migrated here. It is a successful community which threw up Singapore's first chief minister, David Marshall. The history of the Singapore Jewish community was recently published in a beautiful volume, a copy of which I'd like to present to Ms. Harrison and Mr. Dagner this evening. And now congratulate the owners and staff of Bank of Holding on this demo event and wish the bank every success in its Asian operations. Thank you very much.